Now go to Wisdom chapter 18, verses 13 to 16. Wisdom chapter 18, verses 13 to 16. Wisdom chapter 8, verses... Uh, chapter 18, wisdom verse, chapter 18, verses 13 to 16. Right. Your all-powerful word leaped from heaven, from the royal throne, into the midst of a dim light. Wisdom chapter 18, verse 13 to 16. 13, excuse me, yeah, 13. For they disbelieved everything because of their sorceries, but at the destruction of their firstborn, they acknowledged the people to be God's son. Now, what is it referring to here? What event? Wisdom. No, what is it referring to? What event? Not wisdom. Uh, the chapter here says uh, uh, death visits Egypt, but I don't know if it's... Yeah, but forget about the subheading. You just Sorry. read it. When did they acknowledge Israel was God's son? When their firstborn was killed. They, uh, they realized Israel was your son when their firstborn was killed. Yeah. Who is this? What event this is referring to? This event refers to back to Egypt, right? Yeah, so what do we call it, sir? So what does this event, what do we call this event, Timmy? When the firstborn were slain and the sorcerers failed in matching the miraculous power of God. And then they realized... The Exodus. The, say it again? The Exodus. You got it, man. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's the same, it. man. No, I don't want to give it away. Sometimes ask questions because okay. when I force you to think, then it sinks in, right? If you always give an answer... Oh, but when I say what it means, then it forces you to think. And as you're thinking, it's going to be second nature, right? Right, exactly. That's by the, the, that's by the grace of the Spirit. By the grace of the Spirit. That, that's why people wonder, why do you ask questions? Because in asking questions, I'm going to force you to start thinking and meditate and focus hard instead of you just listening and me spoon feeding. You get it now? Yeah, you're teaching lovingly. Yeah, that's I want you to learn it. So now you're going to share it. Now you know. So this thought about the Exodus, right? Exactly. Because the magicians tried to match the miracles of Moses, right? Yeah. That's the sorcerers here. Right, right. Yeah, that's exactly. the magicians. Correct. When they confronted Moses, when he threw the rod, they threw a rod and became a snake, right? But then exactly. Moses is a snake. So it's not about the magicians at the time of Moses when they tried to match Moses' miracle, but then eventually they realized, no, this is the finger of God. Uh, we can't, our sorcery can't match him. Then, when God killed their firstborn, then Pharaoh let God's son go, right? Yeah. So this is the Exodus. Now, here's what I want you to pay attention. Whom did God send to kill the Egyptians and their firstborn to set Israel free? That's the question I want you to see in the text. Now, go ahead. Okay. Verse 14. For while gentle silence embraced everything, and light at its own speed was half over, your all-powerful word leaped from heaven, from the royal throne. Whoa, whoa, whoa there, Nelly. It says that God's almighty word, your all-powerful word, came out of your throne, came down from your throne to the earth. So who's there with God on the throne? His word. His logos. And in wisdom, wisdom chapter, um, chapter 9, it was his wisdom. In Wisdom 9.10, who came down from the glory stone? Wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. Chapter 9, verse 10, correct? Correct, yeah. But here in Wisdom 18, it's the word. So you see how the word is the wisdom? The wisdom is the word? Yeah, yeah. So the word is the wisdom, and the wisdom is the word. They're the same entity. They're both on the throne, and they come down, either to save, regenerate, transform, illuminate, or to punish and kill. Now, God's almighty word comes down. Reread -read that part again, and I won't stop you till 16. Sure. Your all-powerful word leaped from heaven, from the royal throne, into the midst of a doomed land, a relentless warrior carrying the sharp sword of your irrevocable command. And he stood and filled all things with death and touched heaven while standing on earth. Did you catch it? Wor yeah. The word appeared as a visible being he appeared in visible bodily shape he was such a huge figure that when his feet touched the earth he was so tall that he reached the heaven that means the word is appearing in visible form as a huge gigantic human a huge gigantic human figure so he assumed visible human shape so huge that his feet touched the earth as his upper body reached the heaven 
You see that? Yeah. And what did he kill them with? What did the word kill them with? A relentless warrior carrying the sharp sword. Okay, so let's make the connection. The all-powerful, almighty word of God, because in verse 15 says the word is almighty, right? Right. He came down in visible form, in visible shape, appearing in human shape that was so humongous that his feet touched the earth while his upper body reached heaven. And he slew, he killed the firstborn of the Egyptians by the sword that he carries, right? Yeah. So God's all-powerful word sits on the throne. God's all-powerful word is sent to save his people and punish evildoers. And God's all-powerful word can appear in visible human shape. And he has a sword by which to slay God's enemies, right? Yeah. Now let's see who Jesus is. Go to Revelation 3.21. Revelation 3.21. Revelation 3.21. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne. Just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Okay, wait. Jesus sits on the father's throne, right? Yeah. With the father. And the word sits with who? With the father. And wisdom sits with who? The wisdom sits with, with the father, with God. So wisdom and the word must be one and the same because wisdom and the word are both seated with God on his throne. So there it shows that wisdom is the word. Word is the wisdom, right? Yeah. Cool. And Jesus sits on the throne with his father. Now, go to Revelation 19, 11 to 16. See who Jesus is and how he comes to destroy and kill the enemies of God. Revelation 19, 11 to 16. So you, here you got the Trinity in the Deuterocanonicals and the Wisdom of Solomon. And then I'm going to show you the book of Sirach. Uh, Revelation 19, 11 to 16. Yes, sir. I, I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True, with justice he w he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his heads are many crowns. He has a name written on, hi on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dripped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. Wait, so what's his name? The Word of God. And the Word of God is coming on a white horse with the armies of heaven to slay the false prophet, the beast and their armies. And how is he going to slay them? Keep reading. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen with white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. You confuse me. Jesus is the word of God who slays people with a sword that comes out of his mouth. You got it, right? Yeah, I got it. But in Wisdom 18, 13 to 16, the Wisdom of Solomon chapter 18, verse 13 to 16, there it says God's all-powerful word comes down to slay people with the sword that he has. Wow. Oh, that's my yet, Revelation tells us Jesus is that word of God who comes down from the throne, and he has a sword by which he slays people. Now, I'll explain what it means, sword out of his mouth, but keep reading because you read 15. Read to 16. Keep yeah. reading. Um. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treats the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has written this name, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now read verse 21 of the same chapter, Revelation 19, 21. Yeah. The rest were killed with the sword coming out of his mouth of the rider wow. on the horse. And mm -hmm. all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh. So Jesus is the word of God. Whom God sends to slay God's enemies and save his people. And Jesus does that by this sword out of his mouth. Now, obviously, Jesus is appearing with a sword in his mouth. But he literally doesn't walk around with a physical sword in his mouth. So why Jesus appearing in this image of a rider on a horse with a sword in his mouth? Because this is a metaphorical way of showing you that Jesus' words cut you dead. When Jesus speaks... His words are like a sword that will kill you dead, or his words will speak life. If you're his enemy, by his word, he'll slay you and kill you dead. Right. You caught it? Mm -hmm. So are you seeing how Wisdom Chapter 7, guys, just remember these chapters. Wisdom Chapter 7, you can read from 22 on. Wisdom Chapter 9, 
the entire chapter of 18 verses and wisdom chapter 18 verses 13 and 16 there you see the trinity you see god his wisdom who is also his word they're one and the same that sits on the throne with god and the word of god and the wisdom of god are said to be all powerful all penetrating all pure wisdom is said to be monogenous wisdom 722 that wisdom is the only begotten and wisdom is said to be the radiance of god's eternal light Apocosma, the same word used of Jesus in Hebrews 1 3. And wisdom is the one that comes and illuminates, saves, sanctifies, and transforms sons of men. And wisdom works with the Holy Spirit to do so. Because in Wisdom 9 17, wisdom comes down from God's throne with the Holy Spirit to illuminate, enlighten, and save mankind. And the Word of God is the one who slays people by his sword. So wisdom and word are the same, they work with the Holy Spirit. And together, Word, who is wisdom, and the Holy Spirit are sent by God to save, regenerate, transform, illuminate, or punish, and kill. That's in the Deuterocanonicals. 